people, you know, when you get to A Course in Miracles, it's so practical. You get to Lesson 50 and, and he says, try this one on, I am sustained by the love of God. In this world you believe you are sustained by pills, by clothing, protective clothing, he says, being liked, knowing the right people, money, uh, all kinds of things. And, and then he says, you are sustained by the love of God. And the love of God will lift you up in, in, in any circumstance and hold you safe and, and protected in any circumstance. The love of God. Uh, what about insurance? No, nope, the love of God. Uh, what about uh, uh, prudent financial planning and stocks and bonds and, uh, well maybe I don't put a ball in the, in the stock market, but uh, T-bills. Uh, no, nope, the love of God. Uh, what about vaccinations? No, the love of God. You get into Lesson 76, you really believe that you would starve unless you had stacks, piles and stacks of green paper strips and little metal discs. Uh, you really believe that, that fluid pushed through a sharpened needle into your veins would ward off disease. You, know, you believe in the laws of economics. You believe in the laws of medicine. You believe in the laws of nutrition. Nutrition? Of course. We know that organic is, is better than inorganic, right? Do we? No. The love of God will sustain you in every circumstance. It's not what you put in your mouth that defiles, it's what proceeds forth from the heart that defiles. So this is where these discussions and, and everything I share with people gets really, really into the good, nitty gritty stuff. Because what it does is it shows you really in a humble way that everything that you believe about your life on this planet, everything that you believe without exception about the human race, about nutrition, about money, about relationships, about everything, you know, you get the feeling as you go along that you are like this little child that's like holding a hand up saying, help me. <laughs> Help me, I need help. And Jesus even comes on in the, in the Course and says, you really believe that you have a contribution to make to the truth. Uh, and when you get deeper into it, you start to realize is that, that would I rather be right or happy means, would I rather be right about the way that this world was set up, where there seems to be victimization and abuse, and wars, and disease, and pestilence. Would I rather be right about interpersonal relationships? What is a good lover? What is a good husband, wife? Uh, would I rather be right about the family structure, about what's an ideal family? Would I rather be right about law? Would I rather be right about social injustice, the belief that somehow there's a way to even the scales off in the world? when the Course in Miracles says the only justice of heaven is you've got to forgive it all. You've got to let go of everything you think you think, think you know. And this is where it really gets interesting because we've all been raised with these beliefs. You know, and I studied them for 10 years in college. I studied supply side economics. I took a lot of economics classes. Conservatory of music, philosophy, chemistry, calculus. I studied them all, and in the end I had to make an admission that I was completely wrong about everything. Everything. That I did not have one accurate opinion. Not even one. And when people ask me today, what is your opinion about? It doesn't matter what they put after it. I tell them I have no opinion. They say, isn't that a little naive? I say, I don't know, call it whatever you want. Uh, I can't do that anymore. I don't have the capability to do that. Then they'll say things like, well, if you're not making any opinions, you're still judging. Uh, you had to make a judgment to be here tonight. You couldn't even come to this center uh, unless you were making a judgment. And then we get into talking about discernment. Then we get into talking about practicality, like uh, the rules for decision in the Course of Miracles. You were asking, what's practical? Jesus says, in the rules 
per decision section, one, number one rules per decision, decide the kind of day you want. And number two is, say to yourself, if I make no decisions by myself, that this is the day that will be given. It's like a one-two punch. If you really are anchored in the kind of day you want, happy, joyful, free, peaceful, whatever, and you make no decisions by yourself, then you will have that kind of day. And then the rest of the rules for decision are, if you get off the beam, how to get back. But he does say in there, this kind of alludes to your question. I'm usually off the beam. Yeah. Right. And he does say in there, it's harder to get back on once you're off. So he focuses on one, two. So you really put your effort on the one, two. Because once you get down there, I'm going to give you three, four, five, six, I'm going to give you a way to get back, but it's going to be a lot harder. Once you've judged, once you've got that I know mind, once you have an expectation that you're not going to let go of, and you have in mind what you need to have a happy day, that person to call, that person to pay the money back, that person to, to drop the charges, that person to uh, say they're sorry, call you on the phone and say, I'm sorry. I, I, I should never have said that. I was wrong. Once you have a condition in your mind, an expectation, that somebody else or something in the world has to change for you to be happy. The ego is sitting back in the mind going, ha ah, ah, ha ah. ha, got I the baby, ha ah, ah. ha. Like a little spider that's back in the web, you know, and catches a fly. <laughs> and sits back there, ha ah, ah, ah. and comes up to take a bite. That's what happens when you have an expectation. And that's also why my life has been uh, inspired by Jesus, who said, Freely you have received, now freely give. It is my joy to give my attitude away. Angry. I, Jesus wasn't so much a great philanthropist like uh, Ted Turner or uh, Carnegie or something. But, wow, did he give away that joy. And he gave it away. He flung those seeds everywhere he went. He was not going to see anybody as different. And to me, that's, that's really a part of what this is about. When you're in a state of giving, when you're in a state of giving without any concern to receive anything back, you are invulnerable. You are in a state of God awareness and nothing can touch you. Because you're not looking for anything to be different than it is, you know. That's a workbook lesson, that all things be exactly as they are. And all we have to do is get one lesson completely Guess what? The show's over for the ego. You may still see a world, but, but I'll tell you one thing. The one that's looking on that world will not be judging that world. That will be a forgiven world. So, I'd say it's worth it.